Peek-a-boo. Peek-a-boo. <laughs> Super, super sunny today in Colorado and the air conditioning in my studio has not been working <laughs> so that really sucks um, it's hot it's gotten pretty hot and then you can imagine dying on top of having it be warm so it gets pretty humid I wanted to show you how pretty these trees were on this street I signed up this morning for a boot camp because I have 30-ish pounds still to lose from Sage, and it's been a year and a half. It's been, it's been a really hard year for me. <laughs> um, I've been pretty busy, and I've, I've been working out, but I always have a really, really hard time losing weight. So um, I've been working out about four to five times a week. Right now I'm doing cardio, but I saw the sign for this boot camp, and I thought, you know, that's awesome, some extra motivation and be with people and do it with other people, which is nice too. And they're gonna measure me and do all the inches and I think I have to run a mile, do all that stuff. So it's for about six weeks um, in the mornings, three times a week. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm a little bit nervous. It's the June afternoon kit by Jenny of Sweater Freak Knits that uh, we're offering in the shop. I think there's only one left. Okay, just a, sec, uh, just a sec. Come on. Oh. Yeah, oh, impossible to do with one hand. Much better. But that duck makes a huge mess. I'm going to go in the backyard so I can wear them in the middle of the coop. Keeps everything else out of our house. Alright. I'm going to put it up on this. <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs> Hanging out by the river in Boulder. Good job, Jack. Pull your pants up. You do not go potty out here. Hey, John, pull your pants up now. Hey, do you want to go in the water? <laughs> you don't want to put your feet in the water? Someday. <laughs> What's going on here, Let's see how again. Come here, let me see. Come closer. Because the one, don't move now. The one's kind of growing in, but the other one just clear out. Who got that tooth out for you? Ma! See in this cup, 2003. That's how old I am, people. <laughs> this is an old cup. You know, I would have to say that I've never felt more comfortable in my own skin than in my 30s. And I'm really enjoying my 30s, which I would think would be the contrary because, let's face it, I just had my fourth child a year and a half ago. Not just, <laughs> a year and a half ago. I'm still losing baby weight from her. Uh, my, my body has shifted and changed. Um, I think that this might be the transition <laughs> from 30 to 40. Uh, when I maybe start feeling aches and pains that are new and unusual that maybe come with the territory or not. I'm not sure about that one yet. But despite all those things, I'm having such a fantastic time um, being in my 30s and 
honestly, I think part of it is finding purpose again, um, just with my company and dyeing and being able to play with colors and it just completely feeds my soul. So um, I've really enjoyed these last couple years of my life. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about knitting now. <laughs> Um, so here's the hat that I'm working on. You can see I'm getting to the place where I'm gonna need to start closing it up. This is the bulky base and the mohair base. And let's see, so here's, here's the mohair. And I will have this available in my shop when my new fall colorways release and that will be August 1. And I'm hoping to have this vlog podcast out before then. And here is the big bulky, it's so fabulous. I love it. Um, this is a new colorway called Honey Fur. This is Honey Fur. I haven't named this one yet. Always open to suggestions, but I think they pair quite well. And so um, I'm trying to remember, you know, honestly, guys, I can't really recall the cast on and all the stuff for this hat. But um, what I'd like to do is actually write this hat up as a pattern and um, include it with any purchases of the bulky or mohair for the month of August. Um, I might even just give it away. It's such a simple pattern. Um, it's more difficult to see on this variegated, but you can see that I have these little, um, I did little pearl stitches that are offset in between rows. I think it would be really nice to see that on like a semi-solid as well. Um, and I've considered dyeing some bulky up in semi-solids because I have, sorry, <laughs> that's bound to happen, because I have, my nose is itchy from this bow here. Um, I have extra bulky even after we uh, finish the fall colorways, so can see how it's knitting up. I hope you can, I hope it's looking accurate. I honestly expected to see more lights as I was knitting it, but it integrates so well. These light kind of buttery yellows integrate really, really well into the apricot peachy colors in there. Um, I love apricot. I'm totally on an apricot kick right now. So my last step is to um, close this up. And I have, and I forgot to bring it over here, I have a fantastic pom-pom for this that is, I'm not even kidding you, I got it at the Loopy U. And it's like the exact color of this. I got it six months ago and it matches so perfectly. Those really like squishy fuzzy ones that will resemble mohair. And I'm gonna totally hit the top of this hat up with that pom-pom. Um, and this will kind of wear like a, well, I guess I can put it on. This will kind of wear like a slouchy. <laughs> That's cute. Can you see it? It'll wear like a slouchy, comfy kind of beanie hat though. I will say that this ribbing, I made sure to do the twisted rib, which I love the twisted rib. You can see that really fabulous knit line right there. Um, that's what you get out of the, excuse me for a minute, out of the twisted rib. You get a fantastic, really defined ribbing. I sometimes find that the traditional knit one pearl one can be a little bit loose for me. And I also find that this is really nice and stretchy. So I did the, the long tail German cast on. It's just the long tail. I think it's pretty standard. Most of you know the long tail, so. That's the hat that I've been working on. And I wanted to talk a little bit about Huloco because so much has happened and it's been really a wild ride. And you guys have been so fabulous in supporting my business. Um, I, honest, I honestly can't believe how much I've grown and I can't thank you enough for supporting my business and my life. Um, when you buy yarn from me, you're supporting my family. So that's something that means a ton, a ton to me. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, there's really no other way to, to express my thankfulness than just to say thank you. Um, 
and continue doing a good job for you guys and and giving you products that you love and um, coming up with new fun collaborations. Um, anyway, so Hugh Loco, we have done so much this year. It's, it's even hard to um, remember all of the things that have happened in a year and a half, but some of the significant ones is two years ago we moved into this home. That's still a work in progress, as you can see the empty picture frames behind me. Um, we moved into this home. I had like a garage studio. I'm sorry, I'm kind of, I'm just, I'm leaning and it's so awkward. So we moved here, garage studio, um, hired my first employee. I now have four employees. We moved out of my garage last fall, the month that I did Rhinebeck. I had the opportunity to move into a place that's that was just perfect for me and my family and um, it was time. It was getting difficult to have a business at home. It was distracting and I found myself having a difficult time separating work and family, which is something that I needed and is really important to me. My children are so important to me. And um, so we moved to the month of Rhinebeck. I had an opportunity and two days later I signed a lease and I, we literally just hauled ass. <laughs> we hauled ass from my, my garage to my studio. And when we moved in, it was spacious and big. It's about four times, three to four times the size of the space that we were working. And um, it felt so big and roomy. And now after nine months, it's getting tight and full. And um, I've been able to build my inventory back up and um, provide you guys with more yarn. And we've done some fantastic collaborations. We, we provided some support for different kits. Um, I've worked with a lot of different designers in the past year and a half. So um, it's been fabulous. Backyard Chicken Collection 2018 came out. Uh, we released four chickens and four roosters and had a fabulous response from that. So. Um, All of that has been really fabulous. I've definitely faced some difficult things in the past two years that have really gotten in the way of me being available on in this way, on a podcast, vlogging. Um, and um, I shared with many of you months ago that I had lost my brother in January um, so that was hugely life altering for me and it's still something that I'm processing and kind of dealing, figuring out how to deal with and cope with and, um, it was good. It was good to share it with you. I felt like people reached out and loved on me and, um, many of you had a, a story that was similar that was that's incredibly sad, but I'm, I was so happy to feel not alone. So I've never had to grow more personally in my life than the last two years. Um, and I desire to see the good, uh, even when there's bad and there's struggle. So that's where I am today. Many of you comment on the photos I share of my daughter. Sage has grown up so fast and is so fabulous. I love having a girl. It's, it's the best thing. And I love having three boys. Um, I was joking with my husband the other day. If I didn't have to carry and birth another child, I would love to have another child. I'd love to have a sister for Sage. I think that could be really great. And it's not out of the question for me. It's just... I've had four kids, you guys. I, my body is like, whoa, breaks. We need a break. <laughs> so it's been nine years. It's been nine years of having kids every couple of years. So I'm enjoying my break right now. Um, I also wanted to share this with you because I finished my In Stillness Water by Alicia Plummer, which I'm sure I started three years ago. Um, and I really enjoyed knitting it up. I think Alicia does a fantastic job 
can't even see my big arm, sorry. I think she does a fantastic job with her patterns. Let's see, it turned out so pretty. Honestly, I couldn't be happier. This is Madeline Tosh. It's worsted. Remember, I can't remember the name or any of that kind of stuff, but. And I didn't alternate rows. I, um, <laughs> it's really hard to like, man, I can't get my really hard to show you guys this but I'm doing my best I did not alternate rows I just went with it and it turned out fantastic I'm super happy as you can see it's my normal size so in about 25 pounds it'll fit <laughs> something to work for right I would definitely recommend this sweater I would recommend any of Alicia's sweaters she's a fantastic person um, just from the personal conversations that I've had with her and her her designs are gorgeous. I believe they're well suited for a number of different people and body types. Um, I absolutely love that this was worsted. So pretty much I was hung up. I didn't have the collar on. I was halfway down this one sleeve. So I had to knit all of the rest of the sleeve plus the ribbing. And then I had to knit all of this sleeve and the ribbing. So I was on Sleeve Island for a little bit. And then this, I did the... What's it called? Ah. It's a special bind off <laughs> and I can't remember it. Is it the tubular? Anyways, I just hand sewed it pretty much. Um, I did one pass of the knit slip and then I hand sewed it. I don't know if any of you experience this, but if you do two passes of that knit slip, you get like a really yucky, in my opinion, ridge on the edge i only like i only did one and it's completely fine intact and not going to fall apart so you can see the slips right there um you know and honestly that bind off i'm pretty sure it's the tubular um it's so daunting for me every time i start that bind off i have to look it up on a video on youtube and watch it and get the patterning and then i have to have this immense amount of focus because if I lose my place along the way, it can completely mess up my edging and I have to rip back and start again. And it's really difficult to tell where you are if you forget. So it's not always the easiest cast off, but personally, best results ever. I love this bind off. I think it's completely worth doing. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Um, I love it so much. I did it on the edge of the neckline as well. Um, I will say I'm not always the most confident person when it comes to picking up stitches, um, but I think I did a pretty darn good job on this. So I just kind of carefully looked and picked up the best I could. I want it to be super tidy and neat. And you can see that I haven't blocked this sweater yet. Um, so this part, just starting it, was a little bit hard for me. Like maybe I would rate it as like an intermediate start, but the rest of the sweater was so easy and like a fantastic TV knit. So, and this colorway is gorgeous from Madeline Tosh. It's like a gray, purpley, just beautiful color. So yeah, finished object, woohoo! I'm, so, I'm really, really excited that I finished this. I love all of you. I'm so happy to be back, and I hope you like the new format, and I will be touching base with you much more often, I promise. Baby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yay. I'm doing a vlog now for the podcast. Oh, no. <laughs> no. This is my sister, Lynn. <laughs> No, she's my mom's hair.